Oh yeah, it's pigeon time. And if you don't know what I mean, then you're in for a treat. So here's your briefing on this mission. We have a sequence consisting of seven, then 77, then 777, and so on. And it's our task to prove that there's some number in this sequence that's divisible by 2003. We've got to prove it. If you're up to the task, then get out your bread bits for the birds and leave your solution in the comments. I'm gonna go on with the explanation now. If you've worked with math competition problems before, this looks like a math competition problem from 2003. That's perhaps its original source, although I read of it in one of my favorite books called A Walk Through Combinatorics. Where should we begin to try to solve this problem? Well, since we're trying to show that some number in this sequence is divisible by 2003, let's start by considering what that looks like. What does it look like when a number from the sequence is divided by 2003? A generic term from the sequence, of course, looks like this. It's just a bunch of sevens. Then by Euclid's division lemma, whatever this number is, it must equal 2003 times some quotient q plus a remainder r. This is just representing division as an equation. When we divide this term of the sequence by 2003, we get some quotient, that's how many times 2003 goes into the number, plus some remainder. For example, 9 divided by 4 is 2 with the remainder of 1, so we could write that 9 is equal to 4 times 2 plus that remainder of 1. Back to the sevens though, what could the remainder possibly be? Well, it could be zero, but in that case, we would be done the proof because then this term would be divisible by 2003. If we have no remainder, well then this number is divisible by 2003 and we're done. So then let's suppose the remainder isn't zero. Then for every term in this sequence, the remainder has to be at least one. And the biggest the remainder could be is 2002. It can't be 2003 or bigger because that means we could have increased Q. For example, five divided by two isn't one with a quotient of three because three has another copy of two in it. Five divided by two would give us two with a remainder of one. The remainder has to be less than the divisor. So the biggest R could be is 2002. Thus, we see there are 2002 possible remainders for each term of the sequence when divided by 2003. Then here's the trick. We're going to consider the first 2003 terms of this sequence. Every one of those 2003 terms has some remainder when divided by 2003, but there are only 2002 possible different remainders a number could have. Thus, at least two of these terms must have the same remainder. That's a result of what's called the pigeonhole principle. The pigeonhole principle tells us if there are more pigeons than there are holes, at least two of the pigeons have to belong to the same hole. In our situation, there are more terms than there are possible remainders, so at least two of the terms have to have the same remainder when divided by 2003. Let's go ahead and name these two terms. Call them AI and AJ. And let's say that I is less than J. Of course, they have to be two distinct terms of the sequence. So one of them is bigger. Let's just say that I is less than J. Again, by the division lemma, we could say that AI is equal to 2003 multiplied by some quotient we'll call QI and then plus plus some remainder. Similarly, that other term of the sequence, aj, is equal to 2003 times some other quotient, we'll call that qj, plus that same remainder, r. Now remember, we're trying to show that our sequence has a term that's divisible by 2003. Here, we immediately see a chance to create something that's divisible by 2003, which is to subtract these two terms. If we subtract ai from aj, the remainders cancel out. It's r minus r. What's left is just a bunch of copies of 2003. How many exactly? Well, it would be qj 2003s minus qi 2003s. So clearly the difference of these two terms in our sequence is divisible by 2003. It's just 2003 times this, but this 
isn't a term of our sequence, it's a difference of terms. However, all we have to do is write out what this subtraction might actually look like to get a hint as to how we can use this to complete the solution. What does the term aj look like? Well, it's just a bunch of sevens. How many exactly isn't important for our argument right now. Let's just write out six of them. And then what about ai? What is that? Well, that's also just a bunch of sevens, and we are subtracting these two terms. What happens when we subtract them is that all of the sevens from ai cancel out all of the corresponding place value sevens from aj. What we're left with is the excess sevens from aj, and then a bunch of zeros. Again, we don't know what aj and ai are, but whatever they are exactly, the subtraction looks like this. But we then see from this form that there's a very simple way to write what aj minus ai looks like, a way that is both general and illuminating. This number begins with a bunch of sevens. How many exactly? Well, it depends on how big j is compared to i. So the start of the number actually just looks like the j minus ith term of the sequence, because this term of the sequence has j minus i sevens. That's exactly how this difference starts, j minus i sevens. In this example we wrote out, j was six and i was four. So it started with six minus four or two sevens. That would be the second term, of course, of our sequence. That's how the number starts. Then we just need to multiply it by a power of 10 to get all those zeros at the end. How many zeros? Well, however many sevens there were, in AI, that's how many zeros there will now be in the difference. So we have to multiply by 10 to the power of I. That fills in all of those zeros. Now remember, this number, which isn't a term of our sequence, this number is divisible by 2003. We already showed that it's just a multiple of 2003. But now we've expressed it as something that is a term of our sequence, AJ minus I, times a power of 10. So this too, because it's equal to this, this has to be divisible by 2003. But we certainly know that 10 to the i isn't divisible by 2003, because 10 and 2003 are relatively prime. They are relatively prime, or we sometimes call it coprime. This means they have no common prime factors. We know that because the only prime factors of 10 to the i are 2 and 5 and 2003 is neither even nor a multiple of five. So they're certainly coprime. That means for this number to be divisible by 2003, well, it's not coming from the 10 to the i because 10 to the i doesn't share any factors with 2003. Instead, it's coming from a j minus i. This number must contain the factors of 2003 and thus this number all on its own has to be divisible by 2003. As it turns out, 2003 is itself a prime number, but that's not a necessary fact for the argument. This really is completing what started as a contradiction argument. We got these two terms with common or remainders by assuming that no terms were divisible by 2003, but we've shown that force is a contradiction because that forces this term to be divisible by 2003. So in fact, it must be that the sequence contains at least one multiple of 2003. I think that's a pretty cute problem, nice application of the pigeonhole principle, and nothing too complicated, just some cute applications of number theory stuff. And when I tell you I love the pigeonhole principle, Oh baby, just you wait. Just you wait. I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep the cable cut and unsought the table. If Texas instruments don't reply, well, I think this time it might be fatal. I wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded. Hate the odds that I calculated. Press and pull and pray and push it all the way through the whole blue planet. Faded. Psychosomatic habits, why you're so, so.